Hello and welcome to Hello by Felicia. Today we're going to going to look at jelly printing. So this is the gel press. If you have it, I I purchased mine from Amazon. They have them in Michaels. You can make your own. Uh, here's some of the projects I made today. These were made with uh, acrylic paint and the gel press. Here are some of my other projects that I made. This is gonna be a two-part video where I show you how to make the, um, the paper for the cards, so the face plate. And then in the next video, I'll show you how I make cards. These are examples of some of my other jelly plate cards. That's one of my favorites. That's using a stencil, a stencil, sorry. That's a gel plate, and that's the brand, and that's a brayer. I have a glass surface, which is easy to, to clean up, and some acrylic paints. The acrylic paints uh, wipe right off of the gel plate, and it's a good idea to have some water nearby because it's easier to um, clean everything if it's soaked in water rather than dried on your stencils. I always have pre-cut cards and paper and envelopes nearby. And just grab whatever stencils you have. You can grab um, stamps and that's actually um, a die cut. I didn't use it. The stamp I used there at the end, it didn't work out well. And there's some glitter. I didn't use it in this video, but you can always pour that on. Grab some paper and put your acrylic paint on. I try not to add colors that are going to turn um, brown, so your complementary colors right next to each other. Every once in a while, I live on the edge and do it anyhow, but uh, I should probably get two jelly plates, but instead of um, two jelly plates, I, I'm just rolling off on a scrap piece of paper on the edge. I do often use those scrap papers to uh, make cards with, either die cut out of that and it'll match the card perfectly, or sometimes it's, it's just a really pretty background and I end up using it on a card. So you can see, put your paper down, press it all over. That's a, a, a front, that's a for an A2 card, and you pull it. Now you could have done another print on that, and the second print would be called a ghost print. So I'm gonna stay in the same color family, put on another co color of blue, and cover it. All those marks, all those rolls, are gonna be visible on your, um, on your uh, print. I actually like that. You can smooth it out or uh, you can take a straw and add little lines or whatnot in it. And my french fries are done baking. That's Anyway, there, there's a stencil. This is one of my very favorite stencils. It looks like um, paint splotches. And I'm putting this card front on and I'm gonna pull it and get a beautiful print from this. You can use uh, your brayer here or a piece of paper. I love that print. Then you can use the negative. You could have just pulled that up and used what was on the um, on the plate underneath it. But I'm adding the orange, I want that complement. I'm gonna pull that stencil. You could put some uh, another piece of paper on it, but I'm gonna pull the stencil. I want the orange and blue print. I'm gonna grab a piece of paper. And I actually like the back of that too. I, I can see that being used as a card. Pull it, and there's my print, and I, I love this print. Let's 
And I'm pulling the ghost print. And there we go. You'll get the hang of how much paint to put on there. I'm probably using a little bit much because I'm, I'm wiping off an awful lot on my scrap paper. And if I had a second gel plate, I could just roll it onto another gel plate and, and have two prints. There we go, roll it out. So I tried to not make mud, but I should have just left it as is. I rolled that up at the top. It's gonna to turn out a little bit of a brown color. That's okay, I, like, I still like the colors. See, I like the, the roll off there. I could probably use that. And then I'm going to try using this as a the stamp to add. And the stamp was not very thick. It was really small details. And it didn't actually put it on the plate. So this was a little bit of a fail. And then I've seen other people stamp off with this and make really beautiful um, stamp offs from this. But I was not in love with that print. It wasn't terrible, but that's one option. I've seen people with really heavy rubber stamps that do that, that do a great job. That one, not so much. That was a thin acrylic. So I thought I would get these beautiful butterflies on here. And I didn't, but I did get some cool colors on that. I can still use that. I end up using it at the end of the video. And uh, you can wipe this off with a baby wipe or just water. Be gentle. Uh, don't wipe too hard or it'll, uh, it can ruin your, your plate. Yeah, there, I can hear people outside. I don't know if you can hear it on the video. They sound very happy. So, rolling that in there, making like a purple. I'll roll it off because I, I want that green and blue to mix, not the green and the red, or it'll make a, a brown. There we go. And I'm going to apply another stencil. I really like this stencil. This turns out really well. I'm going to add a piece of paper and pull what's through the stencil on top. I kind of rolled the paper around here so it smeared it a little bit, but I will be able to use this, this print. I, I, was a little, I wasn't as careful as I could have been. See, it did pull a nice little print. It wasn't too bad. And this one I actually quite love. So I'm going to pour some of that orange. These are my old paints from, I, I don't know, 10 years ago. And about a third of them are still good. The orange and the red stayed good. A lot of my other ones are nearly out or they dried up. So I was really, really happy that some of them, um, some of them were still good. So I'm rolling this. That silver really makes a big difference. Uh, when you pull that print, you can see the shine on the, uh, on the camera here on the video, but in person, it's really pretty. It's striking. So I'm gonna pull that stencil up. I'm gonna have complementary colors. I just love that. And I'm gonna put a full card that I uh, cut and folded. And I was trying for a one layer card but you can see my fingers are a little bit inky and I wasn't extra careful. I could have been a little more careful. Um, so I, I put a piece of paper on, over it. If you do this, 
add a larger piece than this. This was a little silly. You can obviously see what's going to happen. But uh, I had some magical thinking, thinking that that wasn't going to get on the back of the card. You know, if you cover it with a larger piece of paper, that would have pulled off. You would have had a one layer card. But I get some on the back. So I'm going to flip the entire card over. And I'm just going to use the ghost print on the back. So I'm still going to use the card. Worst case scenario is I cut it in half and use that uh, as a front on another card. So adding more paint and using the brayer here. That's a five by seven uh, gel plate. They do have larger plates, which I, I plan on getting. I'm just trying to use what I have in my stash. I, uh, this year I'm gonna focus on using what I have. So this was a really pretty print that I pulled here. So I'm gonna lay a piece of paper on top of that stencil and pull the paint through that. Again, this is a pretty print even on the back. I like this as well. But I love that. I thought that was gorgeous. That almost looks like a, a, a really thick stamping project. So again, I, I like complementary colors and this is a way to do it is through the stencil once you've pulled the print and it will not turn to a mud this way. Obviously, if you added this over without the stencil, it would turn brown. So I'm going to pull that. And I, I like the, that it, I didn't get it all over equally. So it's going to uh, make a nice, uh, interesting card. So I love this pink. This is really thin paper a friend gave me, and I... Uh, I cut it down, and so it's gonna be the face plate of an A2 card. So, here's my cat Abby, just to say something. So anywhere that, uh, that doesn't go all the way through, you'll see that little pink pop through, which I really love. So I'm gonna use the ghost print, and you could use any color of paper that you like. I love this paper. It almost feels like drafting paper. You can you can actually do this on newspaper. You could do it on your, you know, homework. You know, you could do it on uh, pretty much anything. Mail, you know, old junk mail. You can just use it to print on. I'm gonna try to pull another ghost print here. And there we go. Again, I could I could even use that back as a as a print. I even like the way that turned out there. I could see that being used as on a card as well. I like abstract, so to pull it. Okay, I get a phone call in the middle here. Um, I'm using up the white paint I cut it out. It's a little bit thick, but still usable. So I'm using a, a palette knife. I'm just gonna pull that through. Some of those prints were, were dark, and um, sometimes if it's too dark for me, I will add a little bit of white just for the contrast to make it interesting. Some people like a, a dark or they go for a grungy look and you can kind of uh, buff the edges with like darker ink uh, all the way around the, the uh, face plate. And here's my phone call. <laughs> and then um, magically appears, <laughs> interrupted the video, and then I pulled that. And again, there's that, my favorite stencil. I'm gonna add that to some of those darker prints. And this contrast, I just, I was really happy with. Yeah. 
So I, I get four prints off of this. So the thicker your paint, unless you let your, you unless you let it dry on there, it'll it'll give you several prints. Now if you let it dry and pull it, it's going to be a, a much thicker print. And it'll pull off most or all of the paint, which you might like to do as well. So even that stencil that add, that had that paint there, if you wanted, you could add some more um, paint on a different stencil, or you could layer up more. So these cards right here are two layers. If you wanted, you could make 10 layers if you want. I like this print as well. I think this white is really pretty on the silver and blue. And then this is going to finish up the rest of the paint on the gel plate. And here are some of the cards that I made. Um, if you want to stay tuned for the second video, I'm going to use those um, papers that we made and turn them into cards for the next video. So these are examples of things I fussy cut and some gems I put on cards. So this was about two hours.